Last topic for this week, we're going to do some calculations of pulmonary ventilation. This is also called minute ventilation. So it's the amount of air that is inspired and expired per minute. Minute ventilation, that, that word really is what it is. So liters per minute. What do we need to know if we're gonna calculate this? Similar idea to cardiac output. We need to know how many um, ventilations there are per so how many breaths in a minute. And we need to know the volume of each of those breaths. So that's respiratory rate and tidal volume or whatever the, the volume, yeah, pedal volume. So VE, that's pulmonary ventilation. It's equal to tidal volume in liters per breath times the frequency. So breathing rate in breaths per minute. Breaths cancel out. It's gonna give you liters per minute. Very similar to cardiac output. So we can do an example here. We have someone who is taking tidal volumes of 0.45 liters per breath. 12 breaths a minute, multiply those together, that's going to be a minute ventilation of 5.4 liters per minute. Great. So 5.4 liters are being exchanged each minute. That is a measure of how much respiration is occurring over that minute, um, opposed to in one single breath. So this is what's going to increase as you exercise, right? Both the breathing rate and your the size of each each breath, just like stroke volume and heart rate both increase to increase cardiac output. However, it's not going to be that simple, of course. So not all gas entering the respiratory system is going to participate in gas exchange. This is due to something called dead space. Um, this is related to the anatomy of the conducting passages, basically the fact that they exist. So not all air that's brought in can exchange. There's a bunch of air in your bronchioles and trachea that don't get to exchange. Um, so this is called dead space. So the amount of air that can actually participate in gas exchange is always less than um, what you actually breathe in and out. This is called anatomical dead space and it's approximately one third of tidal volume. So one third of the air that's brought in and out can't um, is, called, is dead space. So about 0.15 liters in this scenario. So let's look at that. If we want to look at dead space, whoa, this looks crazy complicated. All we're doing here though is saying that alveolar ventilation, that's actually ventilation of the respiratory membrane, is our tidal volume minus our dead space. That makes sense. The amount of air that's actually um, going to participate in gas exchange we're going to take out um, the part that doesn't participate in gas exchange. It's going to be always less than our tidal volume um, is about one third. We're still gonna multiply by frequency. It's always gonna be less than tidal volume. So alveolar ventilation, the actual amount exchanged each minute that participates in gas exchange is going to be something like this. The dead space is about one third of our tidal volume. So subtract that out. You also could just do in your head, right? That's 0.3 liters per breath. You maybe have already got to that, that um, participates in gas exchange, right? This is 0.3. Three is not working. That's ugly three. Um, so, Alveolar ventilation is actually only 3.6 liters per minute. Let's do a practice with this. Learning check. So answer these two questions. You've got all the numbers here you need. 0.3. 